Hello everyone, this is Shadi Reyes uh, from Digital America Center coming to you from Karaji Update. Uh, thank you for all the listeners, viewers, as well as the readers. As we know, the ESC 2024 has concluded at, um, at London at the uh, end of August and brought up to us a lot of trials that are really very uh, practice changing as well as incorporation of some of very important uh, changes and updates in the guideline. So we're going to jump uh, straight into it and in this brief video just to summarize the top highlight of these studies. Starting with the first uh, study called um, ABYSS or ABYSS, uh, this is a look into the effect of uh, duration of beta blockers used in patient after myocardial infarction and they randomized large uh, population number in uh, two, two groups uh, people who have interrupted early versus late beta blocker and uh, these are patients who have ejection fraction more than 40 percent meaning almost normal or semi-normal ejection fraction post uh, intervention uh, these patients uh, uh, after at the end of follow-up which was about three years uh, beta blocker interruption was not found to have none inferior to beta blocker continuation so whether we continue beta blocker after mi or not for a patient with ejection fraction of 45 40 percent the beta blocker did not make any difference again very important study i think this is the second one compare uh, after euro pcr another study showed also there is no benefit in patient after mi with normal ejection fraction uh, for a beta blocker this is emphasized on the fact that if patient cannot tolerate or they have bradycardia, there is no harm of uh, keeping of keeping these patient off beta blocker. So again, I got another interesting study that I think will affect uh, how we practice going forward. A second study is also related to heart failure is the administration uh, 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 administered trial as this is a study looked into the effect of digital consult meaning digital counseling and text messages and I think we have a, a dedicated uh, interview with uh, the PI for this trial with a very interesting study uh, looking into the effect of digital consult and continuation of, of communication with the patient via text message on the uh, compliance with the GDMT or guideline direct medical therapy for patient with heart failure and indeed although the study sample size was small 150 patient but it shows benefit in terms of compliance and continuation of GDMT in patient with heart failure when they were randomized into the uh, digital consultation arm very interesting study again as a very cheap budget and also things are we use on daily basis but it, uh, the setup of uh, reminders I think out worth looking into this study and how they design it is very important to implement in your practice Next is a structural trial looking uh, called uh, Matterhorn, with it, which is looking into the patient who have secondary and mitral regurgitation. Secondary mi severe mitral regurgitation randomized into either surgical replacement or into a mitral clip. And in this study, there is uh, was no difference in terms of uh, the patient outcome, uh, admission for hospitalization, rehospitalization for heart failure, as well as mortality comparing the mitral replacement uh, compared to the mitral uh, repair with a uh, transcatheter. Uh, uh, mitral clip um, again this is a very interesting study again showing uh, more evidence that the uh, clip for these patients with low ejection fraction and functional mitral regurgitation can be an option for these patients next is an uh, intravascular trial which is occupy looking into the impact of oct guided pci compared to angiographic guided pci and in this study also showing that the uh, oct patients or population uh, had lower rate of mace mace in terms of compared to angiographic graphic guided PCI emphasizing on the fact that the LCT even in patient with chronic kidney disease and GFR which that is low uh, was superior in terms of uh, results and reduction in MACE compared to angiographic guided PCI very interesting again structural and coronary study is uh, the notion 3 trial in this trial the the, uh, the population studied is patient who have severe aortic stenosis supposed to go for TAVI or transcatheter aortic valve intervention who have already uh, coronary artery disease and the the randomization is to perform PCI on patient with uh, TAVI before the TAVI or to continue with medical therapy alone. A very interesting finding to show that the patient who received PCI had a lower rate of mortality as well as heart failure and also adverse event compared to patient treated medically with severe aortic stenosis undergoing TAVI. Again, this is, a, this is always an area of debate. We go to conferences, we hear about the timing of PCI before or after TAVI or medical management. But again, in this trial showing again the composite endpoint outcome was lower uh, in the PCI group compared to the uh, patient who are treated medically undergoing TAVI procedure. 
Next is electrophysiology study. It's called sham PVI trial. This is a very interesting trial looking into the impact of a sham, which is placebo effect procedure compared to PVI on patient with symptomatic AFib. At the end of the follow-up, the patient who underwent PVI, which is true ablation, uh, pulmonary vascular pulmonary, uh, vein uh, uh, isolation intervention, uh, has a lower rate of uh, symptoms as well as benefit uh, and AFib burden at uh, end of the follow-up compared to the sham group. Very interesting study. Again, I think it's a proof of concept that patient, even if they go for the sham procedure, um, uh, psychologically, they still uh, have a true uh, AFib burden at the end of the follow-up and mandate and give more emphasis on the importance of PVI for patient with symptomatic AFib. Next is a very interesting study looking into um, octogenarian patients who have uh, presented with um, enstemy. This is the senior RETA trial. Uh, this is uh, looking into the evaluation of invasive versus conservative management for patients above age 70 presenting with a, a, a ACS, acute coronary syndrome, without STEMI. Uh, these patients were randomized to conservative therapy uh, compared to PCI and in this trial showing there is no difference in terms of outcome which is mortality MI or any uh, death uh, when we uh, treat this patient conservatively or with medical therapy. This is emphasized again on the importance of uh, guideline medical therapy for patients with um, and STEMI, and again showing that there is might be a no benefit of as, uh, invasive therapy for these patients. However, I think when you look, look into the study and the details, uh, there was um, also subtle differences in patients who have um, uh, severe um, um, cardiac infarction or uh, lower ejection fraction or acute MI or the type or the rise of the troponin. But uh, in general, uh, I think this uh, basis is still, uh, this area is still a gray zone and I think we should uh, pursue what the guidelines say, especially if they should have symptoms. Uh, PCI, I think, continue to be standard of care, but there is a definitely a room for conservative management as well as medical therapy. Another uh, study in uh, patients who are seniors uh, presenting with a STEMI is a meta-analysis looking into different studies comparing to culprit versus completed vascularization for patients above age 75 who underwent uh, PCI for culprit versus complete. Very interesting meta-analysis evaluated the effect if we do culprit only compared to all cause, all, all completed vascularization for patients above age 75 presented with ST elevation myocardial infarction. At the end of the follow-up, which was at least roughly is four years, is there was definitely decrease in the need for revascularization in the patient who complete who had complete revascularization. However, there was no difference in terms of mortality or death or myocardial infarction induced mortality in patient who had compared complete versus to culprit only. Again. Um, as a complement to the previous trial that I just mentioned, with th this is uh, emphasized on the importance of medical therapy for these patients. And again, there was a more higher uh, contrast-induced nephropathy for patients who had complete revascularization. Again, this is a case-by-case -case evaluation, but definitely culprit only is seems to be effective therapy and can be uh, utilized without complete revascularization for patients presenting with STEMI who are above age of 75 years old. Moving to uh, also another structural trial is a uh, RIA trial, which is uh, comparing the outcome of TAVI to SAVR and patient who, uh, women patient who are uh, have severe aortic stenosis. So majorly, this is only a female study, randomized patient to TAVI or to uh, a SAVR, and showed no difference. Uh, showed that patient who have TAVI uh, or underwent uh, repair of the aortic valve using the TAVI technique or transcatheter aortic valve intervention has a better outcome, especially in reduction of rehospitalization compared to the sever arm. Again, this is a one-year follow-up, maybe would require more follow-up, and also the number that were included in the study was a little bit shy, less than 500 pa patients, but again, this is a more gender-specific study, and also shed the light that, that TAVI can be a favorable uh, technique uh, and therapy for patients with severe AS in women. The next is uh, a big registry data, which is a women's health study looking into more than 32, oh, sorry, 27,000 patients uh, who are only purely women, uh, followed by third for, for 30 years after evaluating their baseline of LDL, CRP, as well as um, uh, lipoprotein, and uh, followed them for 30 years. And uh, definitely using a baseline data and how this is um, followed over time uh, showed that this is a predictive of mortality as well as for the first cardiac event um, over a course of uh, one year, of a course of 30 years in women. 
Again, these are continuing to be a valid risk factors that will be measured in a routine practice, especially LDL, lipoprotein A, and CRP for patients who are high risk or as a screening test for patients coming to the uh, clinic, especially in women uh, population. I hope you enjoyed this summary coming to you from uh, Cardiology Update. This is uh, Shadi Reyes from Detroit America Center. Please uh, watch these videos on the YouTube, listen to it on the podcast, as well as read the summary coming to you on Cardiology Update uh, website. This is Shadi Reyes. Please follow us on social media coming to you from Cardiology Update. Thank you for watching.